Welcome to this episode of the Brush and Soap and Blade Podcast, where we look forward to shaving every day. Welcome to episode 133 of the podcast. My name is Rick DeWeese. I'll be your host this week. Let's start off this week with a uh, letter from Owen over in New Zealand. And we'll uh, go into the uh, shave of the day, Well, followed by another shave of the day. Mantic is out there. He's all over the place. He's spreading the word. Talk about the weekend shave of the day on Saturday. And Saturday, well, Sunday for me was, well, an exceptionally good day. I'll tell you why. The Monday shave of the day, I, I got something off of eBay. I'll tell you all about it and what it was. And it's not a razor. And it's not what you'd think. <laughs> Sometimes it's just, yeah, you just got to have fun. And a couple more shaves of the day to finish it up. So uh, this week, I am talking, I, I'm shaving this week with uh, my Schick injector, one of my older Schick injectors. The uh, Schick injector that I'm using is a uh, is a G1 I have, in fact, figured out what type it is. Uh, I talk about it. I thought it was something else, but it's it's not. It's a G1. And uh, so I, I don't know uh, what model or what year it was made in. It's somewhere between 1946 and 1953. I do know that because uh, that's when the G1s were made. But after that, I don't know. <laughs> now, the other thing is that... Uh, I, uh, I've also uh, bought on eBay, so now I have something to uh, to play with that's a little bit different. I have a uh, a Gillette Type E. In fact, I have a an E3, and that was made from uh, 35 to uh, 45, and uh, so a little bit older than my G Type that I've been using this week. But uh, at least now I have something that I can play with. Now I'm not going to use it next week because I have another razor uh, in the rotation that is a uh, Brand new to me, and uh, we'll be using that next week. So it uh, won't be the uh, perhaps the week after, but uh, I'll be uh, I'll be enjoying uh, my new razors that I've bought off of eBay, and uh, yeah, keep them coming because uh, I enjoy finding those things on eBay and uh, jumping in there, and it, it makes me look forward to uh, to the mail. <laughs> Yeah, I go to work, I come home, and I'm looking forward to, you know, just seeing what the mail has to bring, you know. Who knows? It might be something neat, like a new razor or something. So good stuff there. And uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, let's get on with this thing. I got an email from Owen. Owen in New Zealand. Hi, Rick. Sorry for the late reply. As promised from episode 125, I'll do my bit for wet shavers over this way. I can only speak from my own personal point on this hobby. And I also have to be clear that I'm not associated with any companies that have been mentioned. Well, the good news is the wet shaving community is alive and well in New Zealand and have a few areas to explore. Like many other places, classic wet shaving with a straight or DE is the not the done thing anymore, but certainly has a rich past here. Most are just happy to buy cartridges and goo to get the job done without a second thought on perhaps there are other ways. That's not to say it's not accessible to people, nor is it the case for everyone. We, too, have some fairly smart blokes over this way who are fully aware of the fundamentals of the common man, who will greet you with a firm handshake at the sharp end of a stick. Classic shaving in New Zealand is like most places. It is how it was done back in the day. I have friends who are much older than me who can recall their fathers shaving with a straight when they were children and seeing them using a strop, etc. I'm 40 years of age and recall always seeing my father's DE and, of course, the old spice mug and soap and aftershave in the bathroom cabinet. I recently bought him a new DE razor and cream and he is enjoying it again. Don't think he's into it like me, but, however, <laughs> and he is still faithful to Old Spice, as that's what he knows, and that's what he trusts, and that's what he likes. We all have that element on whatever our situation may be. A certain smell can make things a little clearer, whether it be reminiscing from the past or for whatever reason. It's a personal thing just for you. I often pop into antique shops, and normally you can find some association from wet shaving, which proves it was part of everyday life, that everyday people did. I can recall going to the classic barber shop as a child to get a haircut, and that, that certain smell. 
A few years ago, when I started getting into this shaving world, the word bay rum frequently popped up as that great scent. At the time, I was clueless on what it was, so I purchased a bottle, and as soon as I smelled it, it, it hit a nerve, just like, well, that was, that was it. That was the smell from my childhood. Admittedly, after reminiscing, I didn't really like bay rum, but gradually it grew on me, and now I love it and the association that it brings. I'm sure our barbershop scents are different uh, in, to America. Uh, I've used Clubman and Barbasol, which, which aren't really available here as much as I enjoy them, and it wasn't used here to my knowledge. My neighbor is 76 years old and recalls working next to a barbershop in her youth and remembers the bay rum scent well. It's different for different people, I guess, on what that scent is. It really doesn't matter. It's only relevant to what it is well, for you. On the topic of barbershops, they are making a huge comeback here and have been for a while. These places are aware of what it means to be sharp and do a good job at that. And most good barbers will treat you right, and overall you'll have a really good experience. There's no shortage of them. They are everywhere, and long may it continue. New Zealand is also the home of the Goodfellow Razor. Check out their web page. They, uh, they have a few different models to choose from and also a line of shave-related products. They are, to my knowledge, designed and made in New Zealand. And let's face it, a razor called the Goodfellow doesn't come much cooler than that. Kiwis are known for their common-sense approach and the ability to think outside the square. And I'm sure you'll find the Goodfellow won't disappoint. Look smart, look the part, be a good fella. There are a few other web pages dedicated to wet shaving who import a range of products that you simply can't purchase off the shelf here, so usually I can track down what I need. We also have the Shaver Shop, which is in some shopping centers and especially in Australia. They are good and you can purchase bits from them. I was recently in Australia as I lived there for eight years until my return to New Zealand late last year. I picked up a Fat Tip Grande, which is a beautiful razor to use from the shaver shop. Another great aspect of this interest is the research side of it. It's great to track down what's going on and who's doing what. I encourage that side of things for the podcast. We love news. We love that they have re released this and that they're working on that. It's good to be kept informed, the discussions that take place. To all the people who put out YouTube videos and other broadcasts, this is an enormous feature to the hobby. I'm talking to people from all over the world. It's absolutely fantastic to be able to do this. Your podcast, in my view, is exceptional. It's informative, it's clear in point of views, and is of interest to many, along with being entertaining. I assume that most aren't backed by big companies and are all doing it off their own bat which is the key in itself to be good for the simple reason that, it's, that, that you're keeping it real. You hit the record on your terms, and you're in charge of the broadcast. Ain't that something? Again, thank you for your efforts, and long may it continue. It's truly a fun hobby, and I only look at it like that. It's nothing to take overly seriously. It is what it is, and it's entirely up to the individual what it is for them. Again, ain't that something? Thanks, Rick, and all the best wishes to you and yours, Owen, in New Zealand. Well, Owen, first off, a uh, great letter, great email, um, and thank you very much for it. Yeah, it it is uh, it is amazing uh, the the things that we can reminisce about and the the memories that some of this uh, can bring back. Um, sometimes you release memories that you didn't even know were there, and that's just that is absolutely cool. It is also true that the research side of it is fun. In fact, while doing this podcast, I was actually cleaning up and doing some research on a new Schick injector that I bought, uh, trying to get a handle on what exactly it is that I have here and how to distinguish it and what its uh, characteristics are. So, yeah, absolutely. The, the research for me of vintage razors is exceptionally fun and you know just searching around the web and seeing what's out there and who's doing what and and what's being made and going to kickstarter i mean all those kind of things are just well fabulous it, it really is just it, it brings another level to the hobby you are right that uh there are a lot of us that are out here that are not backed by any company 
Um, I know I'm not. Uh, people will send me things from time to time, but uh, most of the time it's, uh, yeah, it's me uh, buying stuff off of eBay or from vendors or whatever, and that's fine. I'm not complaining. In fact, I enjoy it that way because, quite honestly, it allows me to, well, d- do my own thing. I'm not really beholden to anybody. And, uh, and I do enjoy that. I do enjoy being able to say, look, this is good or this is not. It's yeah, just the way it is. Now, there are some others out there that do a fantastic job. And, uh, they are, if you will, supported by, well, themselves, uh, whether they have a company or, um, or blog posts or whatever to, uh, to allow them to support, uh, their efforts in keeping us informed. It's still not, not quite the same as having a big conglomerate uh, say, hey, by the way, uh, you know, buy our stuff. <laughs> so that's a good thing, too. Um, yeah, it is a fun hobby, and it is absolutely up to the individual. And you are absolutely when you right when you say, ain't that something. Alrighty, let's talk about the shave of the day. Okay, so the shave of the day today, I went ahead and used my uh, my tiki into the forest again, as well as my uh, Smog 1305 brush, and I uh, continued to use my Schick injector. Of course, uh, when I did that, what I then proceeded to do was uh, go over to a website to actually look and do a bit of studying as to which Schick injector I have. And uh, I believe I have an E3, um, but I'm still studying because what I'm what I'm doing is, of course, I'm I'm thinking to myself, you know, I need to get a better assortment of Schick injectors. Now I have the J1, and uh, that's much much better since I uh, fixed the handle. But the the old uh, E styles, uh, which is what I'm using right now, that started off with the E1 and then the E2, and I believe I have an E3 or maybe an E4. Um, I I'm still studying, and uh, as to what their differences are, and I'll link to the uh, to the web page that I am uh, that I am using. But again, it's one of these things where. Uh, you know, after I applied lather to face and proceeded to, uh, you know, put the razor to it all, um, I was surprised. I was surprised at how easily I was able to get an absolutely marvelous, and really a marvelous shave. So if you haven't tried an injector before, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, good stuff. So, you know, I'm I'm perusing the uh the different types of uh of injectors, the the history if you will of the Schick injectors. You know, it started off way back when with the repeaters and and then it uh I think the the first one was a kind of a solid gold handle which I saw one on eBay but they wanted like 65 bucks for it. So, those things are uh, apparently a, a little rare. I don't know if I'll ever add one of those to my collection. But uh, hey, you know it's uh, it's kind of fun just kind of looking at uh, at eBay and just images on the web to uh, try to discern the different varieties and types of uh, of razors. Now that's uh, to me anyhow. Uh, you know, getting a little bit of the history is uh, well kind of fun. You know, if you go to like the the single edge razors, the 1912s and stuff like that, everybody had a 1912 version of a razor. You know, Star, Ever Ready, Gem, and they were all well the same, or at least pretty darn close to the same, other than the uh, than the name stamped into them. I mean, they pretty much the same animal, but. Uh, you know the the different varieties of the of the injectors of the Schick injectors that it, to me anyhow really really changed the uh, the the world of shaving. I mean, if you think about it, the the blades themselves. You know, back in the day, a uh, a razor blade was a fairly significant chunk of steel. Um, when they came out with the injectors, all of a sudden you were able to get a very nice shave with, well, the equivalent of a sliver, comparatively. And, uh, of course, you know, nowadays with the cartridge razors, we're, we're, you know, very much smaller in the, in the amount of steel that we use. 
But back in the day, I mean, that was like that was a marvelous thing to, you know, just to just to look at. Things were head, you know, the the, the heads were thinner and and smaller and easier to maneuver and uh, yeah, it was just very very curious. It was an evolution. It, it truly was. And uh, to me, quite honestly, it was probably what a lot of people thought at the time was, well, this is the demise of the big single-edge razors of the day. You know, the Valet Auto Strops, the, the Gems, the, uh, the Ever Readies, the Stars, all of those. You know, I can very well see where Schick thought, yeah, this is the winner. All we have to do is get it out in the public's hand and... Uh, Considering how well the darn thing shaved this morning and yesterday, and how it's how well it shaved previously, yeah, they did have a winner on their hands, and uh, really, really enjoy it. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing some more uh, scouring of the internet to try to edumacate myself on the uh, the wonders of the Schick injectors from the repeaters all the way down the line. Don't know how far I get, but well. It is kind of fun just to, uh, I don't know, do a little search back into history and see what you can dig up. All right. Well, it's another day. Of course, yesterday, after a beautiful start with a wonderful shave of the day, the world received the bad news that... An artist, a musical genius in my opinion, had passed away. None other than Prince. Now, it's interesting. I didn't know really who Prince was until it was a New Year's Eve party. I was in the Navy. <laughs> I was uh, I was up in Idaho. And there was a New Year's Eve party. And at a bar and a hotel, and I think, let's see, so we're in Idaho in January, and the buddy that I went to this thing with, he had a case, it was either him or I, I can't remember which, had a case of champagne in the trunk of the car, <laughs> outside chilling on, uh, well, just in the general atmosphere of Idaho in January, <laughs> and uh I remember, vaguely, <laughs> being asked to leave the bar uh, at about, uh, oh, I don't know, 1 o'clock in the morning because we were being just tad too rambunctious and then proceeding to uh, push each other around in laundry carts around the, uh, the hallways of the hotel for uh, another hour or so, having great fun pushing each other down the stairs and just, oh, yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> Of course, we were uh, we were absolutely lit, and uh, well, <laughs> that helped. <laughs> Anyhow, the reason that I remember Prince and Purple Rain is that the next day, now it wasn't the next morning; it was definitely the next day. Dragged ourselves up and out, and they were having a brunch in the same bar. So you can imagine the state of my well head. You know, still suffering pretty much from uh, consuming way too much alcohol. And if any kids are listening, no, I do not recommend that at all. <laughs> it's bad. It takes a long time to recover from that. But they were playing Purple Rain. They, they, were, they were showing the movie Purple Rain. And I had never seen it before. And the thing that was so amazing and that I remember so clearly and distinctly about it is that it was... It was transporting in that while I was watching that movie, I forgot about my own problems. I forgot about my own issues uh, at the time. And it was all about that movie. It was all about the song. It was all about the the relationships within that movie. It's an excellent movie. Deserved every uh, reward and accolade that it got. Uh, the other thing that... that struck me is after I saw that movie, I became intrigued as to who this guy was. Turns out that he was fiercely independent, 
and wanted to prove to himself and everybody else that he was in fact in control of his own destiny. And I related to that spirit. I related to that feeling. And even today, I relate to that. And so, every time I shave, I am making a statement that I am in control of my own destiny. And the things that I put together and the, the, the combinations that I choose, while not being anywhere near as close to the artistic value, if you will, of, of this gentleman who will be known as a fantastic musical genius. But in my own way, that's how I show my artistic values and, and sensibilities and show to the world that I'm in charge of my own destiny. And so there's a, there's a kindred spirit there. And, and that's one of the reasons that his passing has touched me the way it has is because it is the passing of a kindred spirit and while some people might mourn I don't know that I can because I am more of a celebratory nature in that I just want to say thank you to the the man that allowed me to understand what it was to be fiercely independent at that level and that to a certain extent I carry that piece with me all the time, every day, of what was shared with me on that 1st of January, so many, many years ago, that really solidified a certain ideal within my heart and within my head. So anyhow, those are just kind of some reflections. I was listening to Purple Rain uh couple renditions of Purple Rain, I was struck by the fact that huh, there was one rendition that, that, uh, that I, was, I was listening to that had a guitar solo in the beginning. Who plays a guitar solo in the beginning of a song to, to warm up, <laughs> to get in the mood? Very intriguing. <laughs> he did his own thing. He absolutely did his own thing. He took everything that life handed to him and he played it to his strengths, played it to his advantage. When he did the Super Bowl show back when, it was pouring down rain. He didn't mind. He wanted to know if you could make it rain harder. Yeah, just fabulous, fabulous attitude. And I think that's the thing that, that struck me most was the, was the attitude over, over the course of many years. It's an attitude that I try to share as I walk out of the house each day after having a wonderful shave of, okay, whatever you got, I'm ready. I'm going to take it and use it to the absolute utmost of my abilities to play to my strengths and use to my advantage. Not to get over on people, not to, not to you know, make bad deals or, or do something that is unethical, but at least for myself, to use it to my advantage in making the goals that I want to make and hopefully taking people along with, the, with me on the ride. Anyhow, those are some reflections. Now let's talk about the shave of the day. Okay, so yesterday, when I did the shave of the day, I was using my Gillette, uh, my Schick Inject, uh, my Schick, <laughs> Gillette. <laughs> now that's just funny. I don't care who you are. Anyhow, especially when you consider the fact that Gillette was absolutely terrified of Schick <laughs> because the Schick injector was that much of a threat. And yes, deservedly so. Anyhow, I was using my Schick injector and what I noticed when I threw on my aftershave is that I had a general burn, you know, just kind of all over the uh, just burn. Um, didn't know if that was razor, didn't know if that was soap, didn't know what it was. So today I, I did something and I, and I, I lathered up. I used my uh, Samog Owners Club brush just because that hadn't gotten some attention and uh, still stuck with the tiki soap just so I can keep all the variables the same. 
and proceeded to shave with my Schick Injector, a blade that now has a couple, three shaves on it, and uh, did it with little to no pressure. And when I say little to no pressure, I mean I'm, I'm holding it just with two fingers and just I'm really not putting any pressure on the head at all. My skin really isn't moving from the from the, the the head of the razor from the weight of the head. It's just I mean just minimal minimal pressure. Three passes. Checked. It's just as smooth as it was the other day. Effortless. I mean just absolutely effortless. A little touch up here and there for a few uh few stripes if you will along the jawline that uh that needed just a, a little bit more attention but other than that just absolutely wonderful and in fact the other thing that i've noticed is that when i use the injector now the head on the injector is so so small it is like a third of the width of a uh double edged or single edged razor and it actually gets closer in my neck uh i can get a closer shave on my neck with that and I'm convinced it's because the head is so thin, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't ride on the mountaintops, if you will. It will uh, it will you know take to the contours of your face and of your skin and everything else. So good stuff there. Anyhow, I uh, I got done with the shave, washed off, and uh, I don't know, waited a minute. I was off doing something, and uh, came back, threw on the same aftershave that I had yesterday. Just, again, the only variable that I changed was the pressure on the blade. There was one spot now that I have on my chin that I that I nicked, but it is an unusual nick. It is, it is more like a gouge, um, except it's very, very tiny. It is like I had a sliver, okay? Picture a sliver in your skin and taking a straight razor and slicing both the sliver and the skin that the sliver had kind of pulled up, slicing that off flush, okay, and then pulling the sliver out. And so that, that little red spot where you've got just a little bit less skin covering things, again, about the size of a sliver, I have that on my chin. And I, I got that yesterday, and of course I went back over it today. And so it's, it is a tad sensitive um, to aftershaves, as one would, can well imagine. However, when I threw on the aftershave everywhere else, there were a few, I don't know, I will call them tingles, but no burn. It was 100% attributable to the pressure that I was putting on the razor. It was all on me. I was the one that caused it. Hmm. I had not expected that. You know, one of the things that I've often said is that, you know, if you have an injector, it's very easy to apply pressure because you get the idea or the feeling anyhow that, well, you know, I can I can push a little bit and that'll get the blade closer and, you know, it'll it'll shave closer and no. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. Little to no pressure. Yeah, it actually was a quite enjoyable shave just because with little to no pressure and as lightweight as the injector is to begin with, it's almost like the thing isn't there at all, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Anyhow, I have been and continue to be absolutely astounded by the, uh, by the ability of the injectors. Uh, the other thing that uh, that I did is uh, last night I went on uh, Flea Bay and uh, proceeded to buy a couple of uh, razors that uh, that I didn't have, different models. One of them is an older injector, and uh, want to try that. I've heard that it's supposed to be a little bit more aggressive, but I'll I'll catch you up when I get that in my grubby little hands and uh, can actually clean it up, use it, shave with it, and see what it's all about. And uh, so I enjoyed, you know, just going on and picking up a few things every now and then on the bay. And uh, this is no exception. Look forward to getting these things in the mail. And uh, we'll see where that goes. But for right now, it's a beautiful day. And uh, I'm going to go back to uh, listening to uh, some old songs that stir some, well, 
pretty strong memories. Anyhow, there you go, the shave of the day. Well, Mantic is out there again from Sharpologist. Uh, he's out there, and, and this time he is uh, he's being featured on The List, which is a national Emmy award-winning show where pop culture takes a need-to-know twist. <laughs> so there he is, Mantic, talking about wet shaving and the different, uh, different types of uh, razors, whether it's a disposable, a cartridge system, or your granddad's safety razor. <laughs> Oh, geez. He's everywhere, isn't he? It's it's fabulous. He's getting the word out. You can't ask for more than that. Holy cow. Talk about an evangelist. Wow. Good job. Anyhow, I will link um, to the Sharpologist. Uh, he has the, uh, the, the video that they did for the, for the list segment, and uh, you can pop on that and then take a look at uh, some of his other stuff where he talks about... Uh, a list of things you can do to uh, prep for a good shave. And uh, as I've uh, come to learn, yeah, it's uh, a lot of it is in the prep. It truly is. And uh, so anyhow, I will link to that. Uh, check out the Sharpologist because uh, uh, he's he's everywhere. He's got all kinds of good information. And doggone it, I'm jealous. He always gets the good stuff to test first. <laughs> But that's because he does such a good job with it. Anyhow, check out the Sharpologist. It's well worth your time. All right. So let's talk about the shave of the day. Okay, so the shave of the day, seeing as how it's the weekend, seeing as how it's Saturday, I can get away with and do some things that I would not normally do. For instance... I can actually take a long, luxurious shower because I don't have to worry about anybody else using up all the hot water. And in doing so, I can then shave in the shower. Oh, what a luxury. Okay, so take the tiki into the forest soap into the shower, bloom it a little bit, you know, get cleaned up and then proceed to shave. Use my uh, Plisson synthetic brush which the finish, I'm going to have to just go ahead and scrape the finish off of that silly thing because uh, now it's blistering all the way down into the into the depths of the handle. I think the wood is okay. You know, I think the uh, the wood itself, I'd probably dry out, sand off just a little bit and probably finish with l some linseed oil or something like that and be just fine. But the uh, the, I don't know if it's a dipped finish or a painted-on finish, but it is just miserable and it's, of course, flaking off, you know, just because. Uh, so, so anyhow, um, go ahead and uh, and do that. Lather up the soap and uh, proceed to uh, throw the soap on the face using my uh, my sh my Schick uh, injector in the shower and basically start off and just right off the bat go against the grain and end up with a single-pass shave with just a bit of touch-up. Wow, that's what you can get away with in the shower. You know, when you're dealing with the heat and humidity and everything else, a single-pass shave against the grain that feels comfortable, no muss, no fuss. Holy cow. Yeah. Um, good stuff. So... That's what I uh, that's what I had today. Finished up with some with some uh, vintage Avon uh, spice uh, spice. I can't remember spicy. I think it is, um, but uh, just a, a light old spice scent with uh, alcohol base and no muss, no fuss. Smell good, feel good. Perfect way to start out. Just an absolutely drop dead gorgeous day and. I'm able to get some stuff done because, well, you know, I don't have a camping trip and I don't have obligations today. It's just, it's kind of nice. So, you know, one of the things that I did uh, this morning, I woke up and uh, after I shaved, went down, made a beautiful cup of coffee. Um, actually uh, made the coffee in my in my French press, and then as soon as I had mixed up the water and the coffee, basically to make the coffee, pressed it down, I then poured it in the uh, in the tube of my uh, AeroPress to further filter and get sediment and, you know, real fine stuff out of it. 
and uh, just ended up with an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous cup of coffee. It really was good. And then proceeded to uh, go inside, you know, go in the living room, turn on the TV, and find purple rain on the uh, on the TV, and sit down and watch, and well, let the memories flow. All in all, a good start to a great day. Yes, <laughs> yesterday, the joys of clearing brush. <laughs> okay, so many, many moons back, uh, I was clearing up some brush, cutting down some uh, some trees that had grown along the pond and dam and everything else, and I had these things stacked up, and they'd been there for about a year, and I needed to get rid of them because they were starting to collect weeds and had honeysuckle growing on them. It was just, it was going to be bad, and it was going to be bad quick. <laughs> so yesterday, uh, after after church, we uh, came home, made some bacon, and you know, bacon and eggs, and tried a new pan. I've got a, um, I've got a steel pan, and I'm I'm trying to see. Someone told me one time that you can season a steel pan, and that uh, the the stamped steel pans, once you season them, are you know as good as far as slickness as a cast iron pan. So I am in the process to trying that. I'm, I'm using some flaxseed oil and uh, and uh, attempting to, well, I don't know, cure it, I guess, and uh, season it out and see just what I can do with a steel pan. I've never tried it. I've always used cast. So, I, you know, it's a it's an older steel pan. In fact, it's a copper pan with a stainless steel lining. So I, I suppose it's a, you know, if you look on the inside, it's a steel pan. Look on the outside, it's a copper pan. So uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. You know, first uh, first go around, cooked up some bacon in it and just uh, generally had a good time. And, uh, yeah, things uh, things seemed to go well. So we'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, we'll just play with it a little bit. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll discover something new and uh, a, a new talent, which uh, is always good. It's always fun to experiment. Anyhow, so after I got done with that, you know, cooking up the bacon and the eggs and having a great cup of coffee, and then I sat down and I said, well, you know, I need to, uh, I need to go ahead and get to work. So, Went outside and uh, proceeded to uh, start a fire out by the pond, and then proceeded to load up and burn up all the uh, sticks and twigs and branches and you know tree trunks and everything else that I had lying about down there at the dam. We got about half of the stuff ab- above the uh, up on the upper level cleaned up. And uh, good, you know, all the stuff down on the lower level cleaned up. So uh, things are looking much better. But it was just, first off, it was hot. And uh, hot and fire just, I don't know, there's something about them that just don't go together well. (laughs) It's one of those things where, you know, when you're doing it, you're going, geez, this is insanity. (laughs) Luckily, it's not the middle of summer, so uh, it's okay there. But it was like 85 or something like that. And so for for me right now, yeah, that's hot. And uh, having to be uh, tending a fire that's probably about four feet in diameter and, you know, as it gets to licking away, it's probably seven, eight feet tall. Yeah, that can get a little brutal. And uh, so lots of water and uh, everything. But what I found was I enjoyed, especially later in the evening, sitting around and watching the flames. Yeah, just something about fire. Something about flames that, uh, I don't know, just really, well, kind of draws you in. And it's interesting because uh, last night the uh, the season premiere of Game of Thrones was on, and lo and behold, we uh, we, we had free HBO this weekend. And so we watched the uh, the premiere episode of, of Game of Thrones. Now, I happen to be a, a pretty big fan of Game of Thrones, although, quite honestly, they could do without all the nudity. I mean, it's a good story without that. It, it really is. And not that I'm a prude or anything. It's just, you know, when you when you watch stuff like that, it's like, okay, they're they're putting extra icing on the cake and the icing is already pretty dang good. 
You know, it just becomes fluff. I don't know. Maybe it's my artistic sensibilities or something. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Not that I don't mind, but it's a good story. And, you know, yeah, you got the violence and everything else, so I guess the nudity and the violence all go together, but it's just, it's superfluous. It, it really is, at least in my opinion. Anyhow, I really, really enjoy the show. And so I was watching that, and I was wondering if the character of the uh, the Red Lady, the, the one that always likes to burn people up in flames, if that's the reason that they chose that particular, I don't know, medium. You know, she's not drowning people, she's burning people. You know, and is it, are you burning people because people have this innate... I don't know, thing about being drawn to flame. I don't know. It's just curious. It's just one of the things that struck me. Because right after I got done with, with burning up the uh, the brush pile, I went in and watched Game of Thrones. And uh, so then I went out. You know, I had banked the fire and everything, and it was slowly kind of charcoaling away and everything. And I figured I'd wet the area around it, and it was, you know, absolutely no breeze and so with the door open, I went and watched Game of Thrones, and I could still kind of view what was going on out there. And uh, so watch watched Game of Thrones. Interesting, interesting uh, show uh, last night. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, especially with the Red Lady. That was, yeah, okay. She's been around a while. <laughs> very, very curious. I often wonder if uh, the reason that she, you know, changes is because it's too much effort or it drain some of her power if uh, she stays that way for too long. That is curious. Anyhow, the uh, the thing that was that was really, really nice is the other week I, I okay, so I have this huge rosemary rosemary bush in my garden. Well, it was huge. I trimmed that thing back and uh, I made, I don't know, six or seven huge bundles about the size of your forearm full of uh full of rosemary and they are currently drying in the house and smelling great and um just hanging about gave one to the neighbor but uh all the extra cuttings uh yesterday that was the last thing that I burned now just so you have an understanding the the whole day I had been avoiding the smoke there was just something about the smoke that was I don't know, not pleasant and almost suffocating. It was, and, you know, normally around fires, I'm not, you know, campfires and things like that, smoke is not a big deal. It's tad annoying, but it's not that big a deal. But this smoke, for some reason, I just found, well, annoying. It was just, uh, cloy, you know, just, just, I don't know, it just kind of grabbed hold of you, would have let go. Now, I was uh, burning a lot of birch, and it may have been the oils in the uh, in the birch bark. So, don't know. Anyhow, the last thing that I threw on, which, you know, I had this beautiful bed of coals, the last thing that I threw on were these rosemary cuttings, and there were a lot of them. And the smell, I just stood there in the smoke, and it was just, oh my gosh, it was just glorious. It really was. It was like, I don't know, it was about ten times, you know, I, I enjoy... I enjoy shaving in the shower, and the reason that I enjoy shaving in the shower is the scent of the soap just envelops you. It's everywhere. It's just, it's rich and thick, and just, it's everywhere. Well, picture taking your best rosemary soap, stepping into a shower, and then bottling that up, and then you know, doing about 10 shots at that at once. It was just, oh, it was fabulous. Ugh. Cleansing and just, just, yeah, it was good. Anyhow, <laughs> I then sat out there and just kind of, I don't know, just, just lived in it. My clothes smelled like rosemary. It was just, it was just great. Rosemary oil everywhere, as I'm sure, just, you know, up in smoke and just, ah, good stuff. Anyhow, it was, uh, it was a fun time. It was it, first off, it was enjoyable, you know, cleaning up. It was uh, it was good that I did that. It was enjoyable having a fire. Had some kids come along. I got a canoe out uh, out back. Had had a couple of boys come along, and I was sitting in there watching something, taking a break, and uh, you know, probably I don't know about four o'clock or so. 
And uh, these two boys, uh, probably, you know, 13, 14 years old, came walking up to the door, knocking on the door, and asked if they could borrow my canoe. I'm like, well, okay. I said, you know, went down there with them and <laughs> watched them. They did not know how to launch a canoe. That was funny. Okay, so you do not launch a canoe by putting one person in the bow of the canoe, have the other person in the back, and then sliding it down a hill into the pond. Uh, the reason that you don't do that is because then the uh, the tip of the canoe with the guy in it is supported by the water, and the uh, the the other tip of the canoe is supported by land, and there's nothing supporting the stuff in the middle, and so everything becomes very tippy and very wobbly, like instantaneously. And <laughs> so, <coughs> but it was fun watching them, and uh, they had a good time in it, and they were had another set of buddies that had a canoe, and they were also on the pond, and so they were they were carrying. It was funny. They were sitting there. They were making all kinds of noise, beating on the bottom of the canoes. You know, I mean, it sounded like sonic booms going off to my ears, right? And uh, then they were saying, "Well, there's no fish in there. We didn't catch any fish." And I'm thinking, "Yeah, you didn't catch any fish because you like throwing grenades all over the place, and then wondering why everybody ran, you know, ran away." It's just. <laughs> It was fun, but uh, I did teach one boy how to uh, properly launch a canoe, at least in our pond, uh, you know, on the side, stepping in on the side of the, the, the canoe and everything, and uh, I don't know if he appreciated it, but if nothing else, the next time he goes out, he can uh, he can impress his buddies with his newfound talent. <laughs> Anyhow, it was just an enjoyable day. The fish were, you know, jumping in the pond, and, you know, the had a fire on the bank even went for a canoe ride with my wife and uh, so that was that was a lot of fun so yesterday was an exceptionally good day okay <laughs> now the uh the mobile studio has a fresh set of batteries so uh now we can do something so let's talk about the shave of well yesterday um, yesterday was Sunday, and uh, yesterday being Sunday, I went ahead and shaved with a straight razor, with a touch-up, with my injector. So my Schick injector was is the razor that I've been using most of the week, and uh, that's all been absolutely fabulous. Uh, I'm always, always impressed with how well the injector blades actually shave it's just it is rather amazing you know it's uh it's one of those wonders that you just kind of go how do they last so long how is it that a double-edged you know can last two three days you know not uh after that it just kind of goes downhill you know for some of the inexpensive ones and then you get to a to an injector blade and you go, holy cow, this thing will last a week easy and not be, you know, not really degrade over that period of time. And it has to do with the amount of material that is in the blade, the amount of backing that the edge has. You know, the more backing that the edge has, the, the more uh, abuse that the blade can take because it's that lack of backing, if you will, that allows, you know, the blades to chip and to nick and to all that. And you don't have that with uh, with uh, injector blades. And to a lesser extent, you, uh, you have the same thing with single-edge blades because they are, in fact, well, thicker than uh, double-edged blades. You know, from a marketing standpoint, the uh, double-edged blade is great because it uses less material. You know, and you can... Uh, you can put two edges on it and sell it as something, uh, you know, double-edged. And, hey, you're getting two edges for the for a lower price. But the material that you're actually putting the edge on is so much thinner. It's like half the material of a single edge, you know, just by eyeballing it. Um, so, you know, the manufacturer is saying, hey, new and improved. <laughs> now, the single edge is... Uh, is fairly fairly thick, you know, compared to a double edge. An injector is like either double or half again as thick as the single edge blade is. And so there's a lot of meat to that thing. And uh, 
it does a great job. It, it really does. Like I said, been thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. You know, this week I'm using the uh, the Tiki uh, Into the Forest soap, and uh, just uh, every time I use that stuff, I'm impressed. The lather is just so thick. It's just really, really nice. So, uh, you know, shaving away and uh, not really having any issues. <clears throat> and uh, so this weekend, you know, since I had the... Uh, had the time, which is sometimes a luxury that we uh, that we don't have, and uh, whipped out the Bell brand uh, straight razor. Proceeded to do uh, a couple of passes with the straight razor, and then touch up with the uh, with the single edge. A glorious shave, really was. It was uh, by the time I got done with it, it was like, wow, this is great, you know. And I remember sitting, you know, standing there looking in the mirror, shaving with a straight razor, thinking, all right. Wonder what I'm going to do today. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's it really is invigorating when you hold a blade up against your throat. You know, <laughs> it's like, well, today is going to be, yeah, a day. <laughs> uh, it just puts things into perspective. You know, I mean, uh, life is fleeting, and you know, we're we're given the the directive, if you will, to, well, make each day count. And quite honestly, the only way that you can make each day count is by treating it like, well, what if? What if at the end of the day the good Lord called you home and, and you know, you had to shuffle off this mortal coil, as uh, Shakespeare said? And, you know, it's... Uh, it's one of those things, you know, how do you how do you live without regret? How do you live without, uh, you know, it's like some people say, ooh, that's a bucket list item. I don't have a bucket list. I just, I go out and do, and, you know, bucket list is for people who think they're going to live forever. <laughs> uh, anyhow. It's, uh, it was just, it was curious, the, the perspective change, you know, while I'm using a straight razor. You know, there's part of me, of course, that's concentrating on the angles and, you know, making sure that uh, that things are correct so I don't slice my face off. But at the same time, you know, there's there's a part of me now, especially after having done it for a while, that is just kind of, you know, kick back, relaxed, thinking, you know, contemplating life in general. That's a good thing. Anyhow, it was a great shave of the day, and it was a great day. Well, I got a package from eBay that I've been waiting for for a while. I fi I've been trying to get one for some time, and I finally got a good deal on it, and so I pulled the trigger and uh, went ahead and bought it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a bow. Yes, a bow, like bow and arrow. And uh, I had been looking for a bow. I would have preferred a takedown bow, but those are a little bit more expensive. And uh, so I finally got myself a bow. Now, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, you don't have a bow? No, I've got a couple of them. I've got one that I made myself. I've got an older fiberglass one. Um, and they're all okay. But they just don't have the strength and the power that I need. Now, when I say I need, what do I need it for? Okay, I use a bow and arrow to launch uh, and put antennas for amateur radios up into trees. I find it a far superior method. I tried a slingshot once, and the dang thing went out about, th I, oh gosh, I was shooting a lead weight. My son laughed his butt off. I thought I broke my hand. Um, so I had this lead weight on this fishing line and a slingshot, wrist rocket, and I pulled that thing back. I mean, I pulled that thing back all the way. And I let go, and it went out about three foot, hung up, and snapped straight back into my hand. Holy criminy! <laughs> that was rough. Goodness, back of my hand swelled up like a, about the a size of a half a golf ball. Ah, jeez, I was jumping around. It was painful. Okay. So, move to the bow, and I can shoot an arrow up into a tree with a line attached to it, well, fairly easily. 
I, I can aim easily, I can shoot it easily, it all pretty much goes well. And so that is my preferred method to, uh, to get line up into trees in order to hang uh, antennas. Now, the problem that I have is that there are certain trees, especially the ones up at camp, that are, well, a little bit taller than what they are here at the house. You know, those trees on that old mountain have been around a good number of years, and they're, uh, they're up there a ways. And uh, so I have difficulty, great difficulty, as in, yeah, I can't get them up there, and uh, at least not where I want to put them. And so I needed a bow. Now, a friend of mine loaned me a 50-pound compound bow, 50-pound draw weight compound bow, and uh, it did magnificently, you know, I put the arrows anywhere that I wanted to put them which is great. That's exactly what I need. Well, I said, all right, 50 pounds is about what I need. Now, the thing that, that was, <laughs> so <laughs> the thing that was a bit dismaying is I had an arrow and it was a carbon fiber arrow. And uh, I, I've got to put weight on the end of the arrow because otherwise the, the weight of the arrow itself won't drag the line, you know, past the tree branches and drop down to the ground where I can get it and attach something to it. Um, so I add a weight to it. Well, I wasn't getting it where I needed to go, so I added more weight to it. And so I'm, I'm, I've pulled back with this uh, compound bow, and I let loose, and this thing goes about three feet and falls to the ground and makes this horrendous sound. I didn't think much of it. I thought, okay, maybe I just screwed something up, you know, blind caught or something. I don't know. And uh, I went to put it back in the bow and realized that the arrow wasn't straight. And what I, what I found out upon investigation is that the force of that compound bow is so sharp, so quick, so, you know, the acceleration is so instantaneous that it had basically ballooned the uh, the shaft of the arrow and shattered it. <laughs> okay, so now I'm looking at this and going, all right, compound bows are nice. 50 pound is the draw weight, but I need something with some long arms that give a push instead of a quick shove. Slow and steady push instead of a quick shove, because I do not need to be snap snapping arrows and blowing them up and everything else. Now, of course, the other secret is use aluminum arrows. But uh, anyhow, so I'd been looking for a for a bow, 50-pound draw weight, a takedown or something like that. And what I found was an old Colt Commander um, made by the Colt Company, same ones that make the firearms, but it is a bow. It is a 50-pound fiberglass bow. Now, I've had bows forever. I mean, I've just, you know, there's... As far back as I can remember, I've had a bow available to me, you know, from the time I was a kid until whatever. And the one thing that just is instinctive, and I don't know if it was my dad that taught me this or what, but the one thing that was instinctive is to release the bowstring from the bow when it's not in use. Okay, fair enough. And, uh, you know, that's just the way that I stored them. That is always the way that I stored them. In fact, I remember at one point, I wasn't able, just like my BB gun, I wasn't able to use the bow until I could learn and figure out how to take the string on and off. It's like my little Daisy Cub BB gun. I couldn't get any BBs until I learned how to cock it. <laughs> uh, anyhow, the uh, the bow arrived. Now, uh, it was about 40 bucks or something like that. Nice bow. You know, it's a full-sized bow. It's probably about as tall as I am, and uh, but it's fiberglass. It's an old fiberglass bow, and nothing wrong with that. And uh, I, it, it arrived, and I was like, okay, this is kind of a strange package. I thought it would arrive in a round tube or something like that. Um, and it arrived, and lo and behold, it arrived, and it's strung. It's still got the string in place. It's like, you know, ready for action. Like, who in their right mind would would send a bow, or even have a bow, strung 
when they're not using it. And it's just, it caught me as one of those things like, what the heck? What are you doing? <laughs> you know, kind of like storing a straight razor with the, uh, with the uh, blade exposed or, you know, something like that so that you, when you reach down, you have half a chance of grabbing the dang thing by the blade. You know, nobody does that. Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Like like leaving a carbon steel blade in a razor, you know, and and then being upset because there's rust on it. It's like, you know, you just don't do that. So I went ahead and said, all right, what is the deal here? Now, it's, you know, being a 50-pound bow, yeah, it takes a little bit of effort to unstring the thing. You know, that's just kind of the way it works. You know, it is a 50-pound bow after all. So, uh Anyhow, unstrung it and put it up, and uh, I look forward to uh, using it here in the near future. Um, looks like a nice bow. Really, really looking forward to using it, and more importantly, looking forward to be able to put arrows anywhere I want, in any tree that I want, any time that I want to put an antenna, well, anywhere. Alrighty, let's talk about the shave of the day. Beautiful day out here today, holy cow. Springtime, flowers still blooming every now and then here and there. And green grass, and leaves on the trees, beautiful sunshiny day. It's about 65 degrees. Yeah, it's a good start. And uh, appreciated more so because of the shave this morning. So the shave this morning again was with the uh, Schick injector. It's on its final days there. The uh, the Schick injector, the tiki into the forest soap, lathered up with the 1305 Samog bore brush. Uh, it's just amazingly thick lathers. Again, I'm really having a lot of success, and I I hate I hadn't found this earlier, but it's almost like I can make any soap decent. Uh, you know, and I'm not saying that the tiki is any soap, but it's like. It, it takes the ability to create a lather to a new level almost. Is soaking the soaking my boar brush, which has a lot of backbone to begin with, and uh, soaking the boar brush, wringing the water out of it, and uh, blooming the soap. And between the soft soap that has been bloomed, the stiff backbone of the uh, of the brush with very little water in it, the loads that I get in the brush are just well fantastic. And then when you throw that on top of bull lathering with a little bit of water added to it, the lathers just come out as thick and rich and luxurious. And holy cow, you know it's uh, it is it has been an absolute revelation. So um, from that aspect. Good stuff. Anyhow, the uh, Schick injector. Okay, you know it's. Uh, I, I put a little bit more pressure on it this morning as it wears down. I guess as it gets a little bit less. Uh, uh, I don't know. Sharp. Uh, you know, loses a little bit of its cutting ability. Just a touch of its smoothness. Although it doesn't lose smoothness as much as some double-edged blades. You know, but it does. You know, if you go over a place two or three times and you notice that, well, okay, I'm socially acceptable and it's not BBS, it's like, okay, it's losing something. So uh, I would say that, you know, probably a, a, gel, or a Schick uh, injector blade is probably good for you know, four shaves, maybe five, depending on your beard, you know. I mean, it could be as little as three, I suppose. But uh, you know, it's uh, it's still in the range of a of a pretty decent um, double edged blade, and so you know you uh, it, you can stretch it. But at the same time, it's kind of like, okay, do you really want to? You know, if you've got a bunch of blades, uh, why? Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just one of those things. You know, it, oftentimes like uh, like we read in the article for uh, the Gillette uh, Shave Club, you know, they they tell you you. You can stretch your cartridge out to, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever it was. And it's like, well, yeah, you can, but <clears throat> why? <laughs> if the shaves that you get are garbage, um, why? So, anyhow, uh, no aftershave today. Just wanted to go au naturel and uh, see what happens. You know, it's not the end of the forest soap is not a uh, one of these fragrant soaps where you catch whiffs of it all day long, although 
you know, we'll see. But uh, I haven't had that happen yet. It's one of those that washes off pretty clean. And uh, all in all, a good start to a great day. And, you know, to me anyhow, and I've said this to many, many people, the uh, that's the way to start the day. You start the day with an attitude. You You set the attitude for the day. And, well, this is how I set mine. Hopefully you've got an attitude for today, too, and it's a good one. All right, well, for today's shave of the day, I decided I'd had enough. So I changed the uh, injector blade in ye old shick just to uh, come back to something, well, tried and true, known. And uh, a good shave was had. However, it was interesting because I hadn't really thought about it much. But the interesting thing about it, again, use tiki soap. Uh, use 1305 uh, bore brush, so all those variables are the same. And uh, brand new blade in the Schick injector. And lo and behold, uh, great shave. BBS, or pretty dang close, not quite, but pretty close to BBS. Um, the interesting thing was is that the areas that I had been noticing as issues are less of an issue, but still there. So it wasn't entirely BBS. It was apparently my technique more than anything else. But the other thing that I noticed was that the smoothness of the shave, while slightly improved, wasn't by much. Hmm. So is it me? Is it the soap? Is it my technique? What? Hmm. Interesting. Now, the other thing that I noticed is when I have put on aftershave, after shaving with an injector, I get an overall sting. Um, it's everywhere. It's like, to me, okay, and that's just me, it feels like a bazillion pinpricks everywhere. It's like every single hair follicle is sensitized to the exposure to alcohol. Now, it is very short-lived. Um, it's like splash, sting, done. It's about like that. Uh, but it's everywhere, and it's consistent, and it's, uh, you know, widespread everywhere that I shaved. And I've noticed that on my uh, shaves with my injector razor, and I hadn't really thought about that before. I don't get the same... When I shave with a double-edged or a single-edged or a straight razor, it is different. It is not the same. Um, it is a unique feel, if you will, after a post-shave, I guess is the way to say it. It's a unique feel post-shave uh, with exposure to alcohol-based aftershaves. Interesting. And I'm wondering if that is not a a result of the uh, grinding and honing of the injector blades themselves, or if they hone them and grind them and everything's good, if there's not just a touch of deterioration in the blade edge as the package sits around or whatever, uh, to allow for just, well, for lack of a better word, a touch of razor burn. Huh, interesting. So, uh, yeah, but other than that, you know, the shave is good. It's uh, very convenient, and, uh, you know, goodness knows changing out an injector blade is about the easiest thing anybody's ever done. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you do it over your collection vessel of uh, used blades, you don't even have to touch the thing. You know, it's like slip the key in, slide the handle back, slide the handle forward, pull the key out, you're done. Uh, exceedingly convenient. Heck of a marketing tool. Holy cow. You know, it's uh, especially when you think about how many men have been cut over the years and how many young men, especially when they're first starting out, have been cut over the years just purely manipulating blades. And here you have a company called Schick that creates a package that stores the blades and makes it so you don't even have to touch the thing. Wow. Good stuff. No wonder Gillette was scared.
Well, that concludes this episode of the Brush and Soap and Blade podcast. I hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you have some suggestions or would like a topic covered, drop me an email at brushandsoapandblade at gmail.com or give me a call at 864-372-6234 or contact us on Twitter at Brush and Blade. You can also visit us at our blog, brushandsoapandblade.wordpress.com. As always, we're available on iTunes and Stitcher. 